Now we're going to learn something really interesting, something called the delta to y conversion. It's a special technique to take care of a circuit that looks just like that. And so this is actually known as a bridge circuit and later on I'll show you some more examples of what bridge circuits are and how to utilize them and how to use them. So think about that. But uh, for now we're just going to learn some special technique. So this is what we call a bridge circuit where we have Starting from point A, we have two resistors going out here, making a junction with a resistor in between and two resistors coming back together to B. This is typically called the load resistor, and bridge circuits are used for all kinds of things, and uh, a special kind of bridge circuit is called the Wheatstone bridge circuit, and we'll show you some more videos on that later on, on how to utilize that. But what we're going to try to do here is find the equivalent resistance between A and B. So our equivalent, our uh, equivalent, is equal to question mark is the big question right here because actually this is not that easy to do if you do not know how to do a delta to y conversion. We can maybe use Kirchhoff's rules and all that, put a current on there, put a voltage on there, and it would be like solving a six equation, six unknown, six equation type of problem. Very difficult to do, lots of legwork, lots of mathematics, but there's actually a really simple, easy way to solve a problem like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this portion of the circuit which, if you think about it, looks just like a delta, doesn't it? Looks just like a triangle or a delta, and we're going to take that delta and convert it to a y. So in other words, what we're trying to do is something that looks like this. Here's the delta connected to this right here, and we're going to convert that to a y so that it looks like this and connected like that. And so we'll have a resistor here, resistor there, resistor there, there and there, instead of having resistors like that. Notice the difference. Here you can use the series and parallel rules, rules to figure out what the equivalent resistance is, but once we have it looking like this, notice that these are simply two parallel branches connected to a series resistor and we can very easily find the equivalent resistance of this. So if we have a technique to go from that circuit to that circuit, we have it made. Now we can solve the problem. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make this look like that. So let's draw that circuit and see what we get. So here we have a resistor here, we'll have a resistor this way, we'll have a resistor this way, and then that's connected to the existing two resistors there. Those are unchanged, like that. So this is still R2 and this is still R4 with the values of 20 ohms for this resistor and this one was an 80 ohm resistor like that. But these three resistors now are going to be very different resistors than the three that we had there. Now the question is how do we convert from those three to these three? So let's call these, uh, let's call it resistor A, let's call this resistor B, and let's call this resistor C. Now, how do we find the values of A, B, and C? Well, notice that if I were to draw this drawing in here, it would kind of look like this. So we would have resistor A here, and then here we would have resistor B, and then here we would have resistor C. So this would be RA, this would be RB, and this would be RC. Now, notice that A is between 1 and 3, Resistor B is between 1 and RL, and C is between 3 and RL. So if you can kind of look at that, that C is positioned between those two, A is between those two, and B is between those two. And that's a, not a very good looking B, so let me write this a B there. There we go. All right? So notice how A is between those two, C is between those two, B is between those two, and that's the hint. This is how we're going to convert from these three resistors to those three resistors. So look carefully. RA, resistor A, is going to be equal to the product of the two adjacent resistors right here. So it's going to be equal to the product of R1 and R3. R1 times R3 divided by the sum of the three resistors in the delta. So it would be R1 plus R3 plus RL. Now take resistor B. Since resistor B is between these two resistors, it's going to be equal to the product of those two resistors, so it's going to be the product between R1 and RL divided by the sum of the three resistors, R1 plus R3 plus RL. And finally, resistor C, since that is between these two resistors, it'll be equal to the product of those two resistors, so this is going to be equal to R3 
times RL divided by R1 plus R3 plus RL. All right. Let's bring in some numbers, see what it looks like. So this is equal to, remember R1 was 10, and R3 was 30 ohms. And then the sum of the three, R1 was 10 plus 30, and RL was 5 plus 5. So this is going to be 300 divided by 35, oh, 45. And so let's get a calculator. Let's see what that is equal to. So we have 300 divided by 45, and we get... Hmm, 6.67, good enough, 6.67 ohms. All right, for this one here, we have R1, which is 10, RL, which is 5, divided by 10 plus 30 plus 5, which is equal to 50, divided by 45, which, hmm, 50 divided by 45, yeah, 1.11, 1.11 ohms. And finally, on this one here, this would be equal to R3, which is 30, times RL, which is 5, divided by 10 plus 30 plus 5, which is equal to 150, divided by 45, which would be three times as much, right? That would be 3.33 ohms. All right, so now we have the resistors of the Y instead of the delta. So RA becomes a 6.3. 6.7 ohm resistor, RB will now become a 1.11 ohm resistor, and RC will now become a 3.32 ohm resistor. And now all we have to do is solve this circuit, and that will give us the equivalent resistance of that circuit. It's almost like magic. It's, I really like this when someone, oh, I was in junior college when someone showed me that, and that was just like, wow, that is neat. So let's go find out what the final answer is. Now notice that these two are in series, these two are in series, this is still A, this is still B, so we want to know the equivalent resistance between those two, so we're going to redraw the circuit by combining those two and combining those two. So this circuit now will look like this, we still have the single resistor there, connected to A, and then we have the branch here, so that will be a single resistor, that will be a single resistor, like so. So this is still the 6.67 ohms, 6.67 ohms. Here we're going to add these two together, it's 20 plus that, which is 21.11, and here we're going to add these two together, which will be 83.32. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, that's right, I wrote pretty sloppy here, and I didn't get that right. There we go. All right, now, two resistors in parallel, we combine them, product over the sum method, so this is now, this would be B, of course, and so now this is going to become these two resistors right here, and B, so the first one hasn't changed, that's still my 6.67 resistor, 6.67, but the second one is the combination of those two, that's the product over the sum, I got a little room over there, so let me find that, so the R equivalent of those two resistors is equal to the product, 21.11 times 83.33, divided by the sum, 21.11 plus 83.33, and let's see what that is equal to. All right, so 21.11 times 83.33 equals, divide by the sum of the two. Uh, the sum of the two would be 104.44. 104, ooh, wrong one. 104.44 equals, and I get 16.8, 16.84. That would be ohms, so this would be 16.84, and finally, we now combine those two resistors, because they're in series, so now we have a single resistor between A and B, and when you add those two up, 6.67, so add 6 to that, that's 22, that's 23, so that's 23.6, and that's 4, that's 5, and 4 and 7 is 1, and so that would be the equivalent resistor for the entire circuit, right there, 23.51 ohms, which is equal to this circuit right there. We call that a bridge circuit. We'll learn more about that in the later video, but all we have to learn now here is how to take this portion of the bridge circuit, which is a triangle, a delta, and convert it into a Y 
find the equivalent resistance of these three resistors based upon those three resistors, show you how to do that. When you get the three values, you plug them in. Now we have a simple series parallel circuit which we can solve using our normal rules and get the equivalent resistance of that. And that is a very handy trick.